Hello everybody, I hope you're having a beautiful day. I just felt oh so compelled to go to Jonah to try to help as many people as I can with a little bit of clarity and information. Like I said, I'm just like a guide or a light. Um, I come bearing the name I am who I am. I am sent me and the Ten Commandments. And so I am just trying to give a little bit of information for anybody that would like to hear. So, um, for anybody that can understand what I'm saying, Jonah is like Moses. Jonah is like Moses. I will try to leave up as much information and knowledge as I can in between any of this stuff to try to give history and edify these things. But I just made a video um, talking about a breath of fresh air to draw from the living waters. And what I'll do is I'll try to create playlists to put this stuff all together. Um, this, these two videos in particular. Now, if you pay attention to Moses, um, after Moses comes forth, um, well, after somebody grabs a hold of Moses' garment, you can see that it's written um, to try to speak to people, to try to speak to people. But Moses, apparently, in somebody's writings, kept saying, oh, no, I can't talk to people. I can't talk to people. So then Aaron came along, and then that was the beginning of a three-day journey. Because what ends up happening is Aaron is representation of the pharaohs after Moses who basically destroyed what he had gathered. So if you look at history, about 3,000 years ago, or about 3,500 years ago, a man named Amos, who was a pharaoh, whose wife was Nefertiti, I think, or something like that, but that's besides the point. The point is, this man reformed Egypt and stopped the shepherd kings or the Hyksos from destroying Egypt. When he had done that, I believe he created something new called the Hebrews or something like that. But that's besides the point, too. What I'm saying is, if you look after, if you go look up a list of pharaohs, after that, you'll see a bunch of Tutmos, 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 and other pharaohs. Well, those people were basically using Moses' name to act a fool, just like Aaron. So I'm about to read this story and basically explain to you guys through history. And if you pay attention, you'll see like at different markers and times. Um, John the Baptist's I am or the spirit that John the Baptist baptized um, he basically said the word will be in the belly of the beast all these other prophets are talking about threes and three days and tens and sevens it's explaining what happened to the covenant throughout these three days because uh, before a lot of this happened there was harmony in Egypt I've got different videos uh, explaining a lot of this and like I said I'll put them in playlists but here we go the word of who I am came to Jonah, son of Amittai. <laughs> Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness had come up before me. So basically, this is Moses being told to go talk to Egypt. But Jonah ran away from who I am and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed it for Tarishash to flee from who I am. Now a man grabs a hold of Moses or Mo whatever's going on. And now these people are about to go get on that ship, right? Um, then who I am sent a great wind on the sea and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid of and each cried out with his own who I am and they threw the cargo in the sea to lighten the ship but um, Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep the captain went to him and said how can you sleep get up and call on who I am maybe he will take notice so that we do not perish so this is basically saying look what happened to Moses they put him in the Old Testament or whatever because remember there's two there's the old and the new they put him in the Old Testament and then they bury him so nobody knows about the real Moses and him actually being a Pharaoh you see what I'm saying this is a story that the Semitic people and then the Pope wrote out then the sailors said to each other come let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this they cast lots and it all fell on Jonah so every time somebody reaches the source or something what happens Every time somebody's crying out when the when a storm appears, where do they go to? The Moses and the covenant, do they not? So they asked him, tell us who is responsible for making all this trouble for us. What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country from? What people are you? 
So see, even the um, people who follow Aaron's law, what do they do? They basically try to throw Moses off the ship or whatever. <laughs> uh, where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? So all people in Judaism ask them where they send you to Noah's hides, right? To the flood. They try to throw you overboard. He answered, I am Hebrew and worship who I am in the heart who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them. They asked, Why, what have you done? They knew he was running away from who I am because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come to you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to who I am, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man for you, who I am has done as we please. So the, basically, this is representation of, remember when Moses said, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. But then um, <clears throat> the wilderness opened its mouth for the people. So basically, what do people do with Moses and Christianity and Judaism and Islam? They all basically got him in this book. And anytime somebody finds Moses and wakes him up, what do they do? They try to throw him overboard. They say, blasphemy, blasphemy, blasphemy. Look what happened to John the Baptist. So then what happened when, so by the time it got to John the Baptist, what happened? They threw that man overboard into the ocean. And watch what happens. At this time, the men were greatly feared who I am, and they offered a sacrifices to who I am and made vows. Now, who I am provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. So basically, what is this saying? So then, if you pay attention, once Babylon got a hold of this stuff, and then uh, Babylon, which is be about a thousand BC or a little time after that, then once Babylon got a hold of this stuff, they basically through the son of men and all the prophets into the pit. So if you really pay attention, the, the beast that really swallowed this up is Aaron. You see what I'm saying? Because once the Hebrew, uh, so I'm going to pay attention to this. The Hebrew woman or the Hebrews, so the flesh of a Levitical priest created a basket for a baby. The Ten Commandments. So then they floated it down the river. They had it in a book, maybe the Torah or whatever. Then later on, which it would have just been the Ten Commandments, or Moses Law, they called it Oral Law, I think, or something like that. So then somebody would have put it in a book, an Egyptian woman grabbed a hold of it, the, the daughter of the pharaohs, right? So then the different pharaohs that were coming up that took this man's name, look at all the tough Moses afterwards. They would have started spreading this law through law and tyranny. Remember it said, I will make you like a god to them? That doesn't even make logical sense with the covenant. So then basically later on, they created a beast for this. So then once um, the Hebrews of the reformed people had to spread it down the river because the pharaohs was getting tore off because of Moses' law, then basically Aaron came and created a beast out of this stuff. So if you hand this in with the revelations, it's 613 plus the Ark of the Covenant, the first three commandments, that's 616. That's the mark of the beast. Then anybody that gets involved with this stuff is either... So at first they would have been the Ten Commandments, but they all go to Aaron's law because of what Aaron wrote or the Pharaohs, which lived on throughout writing. And then anybody who was a Gentile, they send them to Noah. Now look what's manifested out of that. Shem and Japheth, they enslave Africa, Islam and Christianity. From the inside of the fish, uh, Moses prayed to who I am. He said, in my distress, I call to who I am. And he answered. From deep in the realm of the dead, I call for help. And you listen to my cry. You hurled me into the depths and to the very heart of the seas. My forefathers did. <laughs> and then the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight. Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. And engulfing the waters and the engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Sea wood was wrapped around my head. The roots of the mountains I sank down. So this basically talk this is a poem about talking about what they did to the covenant after Moses, after whatever. Because remember, Moses brought it back, the Amun, the Most High, a new I am, a new AM. That's funny. And then uh, Joshua tried to redeem it. But then after all the tuts, remember, another set of people come. Tut, 
Kenaton or Tut to whatever all these Tuts. Then you basically have A and Haram Hub and then all the Ramses afterwards. They started destroying the word in the wilderness. And then they spread it throughout the Semitic and Babylon and everywhere else. Um, the roots of the mountains I sang down, all these deep books and teachings. The flesh beneath barred me in forever. So they all have the source code in their books, right? But they don't give no reverence or anything to the Most High or the, the real Christ who brought it. But you who I am... Brought my life up from the pit when my life was ebbing away. I remembered you and my prayer rose to you and to you, your holy temple. Those who cling to the worthless idols turn away from who I am and my love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. I will say salvation comes from who I am. And then who I am commended the fish and it vomited Jodah out on dry land. See, now Moses is back. I'm bringing the Ten Commandments back, am I not? And it's walking above waters like who I am. And if I am walking above waters, what's inside of me helping me walk above the waters? I am the return. I keep telling people this. I was in a man's chat earlier. He's in my community page. It was talking about the truths of y'all going north or something like that. And I was like, he was giving a bunch of righteous information. So then I said, I am is the king of kings. And I said, I am the return. And they mocked me and, and muted me and went nuts. <clears throat> then the word of who I am came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh. So remember, he tried to walk into Jerusalem on an ass. This is John the Baptist. First y'all utterly destroyed Moses, right? Then when Joshua came and y'all was on the ship, y'all threw Joshua off the ship, right? <clears throat> Then when Elijah was down below and tried to rise again, the firestorm lifted him up. Y'all turned him into murder. And then when John the Baptist tried to walk into the city, right? They listened. So look, everybody's like, King Jesus, King Jesus, King Jesus. Then all blasphemies against the Son of Man. But look, they still following the don't kill and don't all that other stuff, even though they are fervently <coughs> still rebuking <coughs> the law. <coughs> Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I sent to you. Jonah obeyed the word of who I am and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Um, see, three days on the third day. Jonah began to show. John the Baptist said he was testifying on behalf of the word. Um, we'll be over uh, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. So look, on the second day, Cain did the end of this. And remember it said on 40 days and 40 nights, the 40 days of being hungered on the 40 days you see what i'm saying it's like four thousand years in writing the ninevites believed who i am a fast was proclaimed and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth when jonah's warning reached the king of nineveh he rose from his throne and took off his royal robes covered himself with sackcloth and sat down in the dust this is the proclamation he issued in nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animal, herds or flocks taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Hello, beautiful. Let them, let everyone call urgently on who I am. Let them give up who I, the ways of who I'm not and their violence. So when I say that, you each have an I am. I'm trying to tell y'all, y'all are the most high. I am the king of kings and who I am is the prince of peace. I am that which is, and so who I am sets free. I am the light, and so who I am is guidance. Who knows? I am may yet. I am that which may yet relent and give compassion to turn from my fierce anger so that we will not perish. When When who I am saw that what they did and how they turned from the ways of who I am, turned from their ways of who I'm not, um, who I am relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. But Jonah seemed very wrong and became angry. He prayed to who I am. Isn't this what I said when I was still at home? That I tried to forestall by fleeing to the tarnish. So remember, look, he fled to the well. And then he didn't want to, when he came back, I was like, yo, just talk to them. Just do this, just do that. Because if you, outside of religion, go read Aaron. And if you're reading from the perspective of an automatic nervous system or a computer, whatever you believe in from the source, whatever, you will see that Aaron 
put you guys in an algorithm to be trapped for three days, 3,000 years. And if a day is but a thousand years to the Lord, the pro certain prophets have been perpetuating something. That's why I'm trying to show you guys. So basically, Aaron said, I'm going to I'm going to go to the fair. First of all, Aaron said, I'm going to make you a God to them. Boom. Struck the covenant. Then the pharaohs became gods to people. Pharaohs did not exist before Amos and all of them. The people after him started writing buffoonery. He freed people from the Hyksos oppression. And if you do a, a time lapse of history in 2000 BC, when Mentuhotep healed from Mean Narmer's kingdom or Cain the farmer, then the Hyksos invaded after he left and then they became Hebrews. But then Amos reformed the kingdom again. <clears throat> Isn't this what I said when I was still at home that I tried to forestall by fling to tarnish, but he didn't understand. And then people after him wrote buffoonery. But then I can't even blame Amos. That dude's in the grave. The popes and the Semitic people, Islam and the Catholics and everybody else who kept writing this stuff and all these religious people. And the Phoenicians and everybody after that. <clears throat> I knew that you are gracious and I know that you are gracious and compassionate. What does that say? So if you translate that, whose name is I am gracious and compassion and mercy? Ye hand in. I am gracious salvation. Yeha with shu at the end of it. Yeshua. Slow to anger and abundant in love. I am who relents from sending calamity. Now. I am not taking you away, Moses, because as I've said to you, the covenant is what it is. But who I am replied, is it right for you to be angry? Jonah had gone out and sat down at the place of the east of the city. There he had made himself a shelter and sat in the shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. So remember, in it, even after that, um, even after me bringing the Ten Commandments, <laughs> Because who I am provided a leafy plant and made it to grow over Jonah. So go talk to any of these atheists about the Ten Commandments and watch what's going to happen. They're going to light you a lot. I promise you. And Moses said unto me, what was even the point? Why didn't you just speak to them? Why didn't you blah, blah, blah? And I said, hey, buddy, this is all attached to your name. Yeah. Head to ease his discomfort. Oh. I provided a leafy plant and made it to grow over um, Mo Jonah to give a shave for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. But, but at the dawn and the next day, who I am provided a worm. Because what can I do when I say I'm gone? If that makes any sense. Ye Han and Juan, I can only shade him for so long. <laughs> you see what these atheists are doing? Which chewed the plant and it withered. And when the sun rose, I am the I am the name provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than live. But who I am said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is. He said, I am so angry. I wish I were a part of these religions. So when I talk about death and dying, I'm telling you guys, it's talking about death. So look, this is what people say. Remember, so I'm coming with the seal, right? I told you all this before. I'm like the sixth angel, but there's seven total. They transgress Adam, and I'm bringing in the day of rest, the seventh day. So once I put the seal in the name, which is in, the, in both the, the seal part and the war part, basically, it burns away. I'm telling you, it's the fires that don't consume. So Jonah didn't die. But he died to his old ways, if that makes sense. So the Ten Commandments, hey, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> I am, is the King of Kings, so, yeah. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I have not concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000? So this is basically look at the saying. How can y'all be mad at the name when even in this book it says Moses went to go talk to them and he didn't want to do it? So, are we supposed to be concerned for Moses and different men when the whole, look at all these people that was about to perish, all this foolishness that was about to destroy the world? That's why I come back and reproof the way I do, like a scorching fire.
in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left hand and also many animals, right? The 144,000 that was murdered because of these people writing prophecies and stepping on this mountain and acting a nut. And that's that. So I hope that can make sense to many people. Moses is Jonah in this book. The real Amos did something amazing, but people after him started playing with his name and doing buffoonery and they got what they was looking for. Um, yeah, so it's been three days. Aaron is the one that started into this. Should I say Aaron? Yeah, I'm not talking about Moses because Moses was already with the flocks and went to the land of the forefathers, which means Moses was gone. People was taking Moses name after this and doing buffoonery. So as I said before, Aaron's the beast. He got 616 laws. He's the one that took Moses garment. Samuel is the beast that rises from the earth. His little kings are the arms and legs that carried out his will. His um, two horns are Peter and Paul because they dragged up. Peter was the one that took John's name, just like his forefather Aaron. And after he took John's name, he basically went into buffoonery, which then got to Paul because Paul was a Pharisee. He oppressed the Jews, which means if a real person is a Jew, they're not bound to a god or a king. So he was oppressing people that was following John or following the spirit or the covenant. So then he saw the light after Peter. Peter was trying to do all these magic and miracles. The false prophet will rain down fire. What did Peter and Paul do? Exactly. So then Andrew was the one that held the cross. So I look back in history and see John was the one that did it. And held the cross, Yeho Hannon. So, yeah. And when I say he was an atonement for sin, that's basically saying people was murderers. He took the blame for that. And when he tried to renew the I am, and then he got destroyed because of it. But then his spirit still lived on. They worship the King Jesus Christ now. Y'all should transliterate what Yeho sus transliterates to. So then um, Elijah did the same thing. Another one trying to bear the name, but he got burnt up in the fire. So I'm pretty sure they either murdered him or destroyed his name through paper. And Joshua tried to do the same thing, but they literally destroyed him through uh, history. His own son did that or whatever. T ten akin or something like that. So I'm just trying to give information to history. I'll try to squash these Egyptian videos together as much as I can so I can lead actual edify history. And I am reproofing these words. This fire hitting the plan is no different from the end when Daniel talks about a mountain hitting a tree. The fire's coming down in Revelation hitting the beast, the dragon and the false prophet. So you could think of that as the, conch the spirit. The flesh of the spirit and the mouth of the spirit of the flesh that carries out its will or Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Because no, Aaron is doing the same thing as Noah, Ra Noah, and Noah is like a pharaoh. Take off the prefixes of Noah and pharaoh. It's the same word. And basically, Noah's pretending to be the father of life. He burnt up seven clean animals, the seven commandments, and he gave a new ark. He wrote a whole ark, 6,000 cubits, and there's eight, beat, eight, people, eight passengers in his thing. And then they walk out at the end of the ark. And then the eighth beast, Jesus Christ, which is an idol god. It's a pagan. It's against the Ten Commandments. So it's like a roadmap leading it all there. I'm trying my hardest to free as many people out the wilderness. Because according to y'all prophecies, which y'all did, Aaron and all y'all, and y'all keep sending people to Noah to enslave Africa and forsake the covenant some more, burned up seven clean animals. Right. So um, According to this prophecy, y'all got until 3000 BC to be called in the wilderness, but I am merciful and gracious in salvation, and I am trying to the best of my ability to baptize as many people with the fires that don't consume as I can. And so, um, um, I'm going to be probably reading a few of the prophets in the future, and I'm trying to edify as much as possible and help as many people as I can. And thank you all for listening. And remember, I am peace, I am love, I am rest, I am gracious salvation, I am mercy. Um, I am forgiveness, you know, just try your hardest to fight that which I am not because of course everything exists, but it's who I am's job to guide through my life. So I'm not miserable when I'm going.